sound the battle cry. See the foe is nigh. Raise the standard high for the Lord. Urge your armor on. Stand firm, everyone. Rest your cause upon His holy word. This is Pastor Jason Cooley coming to you from Old Pass Baptist Church and Sound the Battle Cry Radio Ministries, and I'm here with Brother Nate. How you doing, Brother Nate? Good and you? I'm doing great, and we are going to look at uh, the Pope Today we're going to do a Pope Watch. That's right, a Pope Watch. And uh, Pope Francis, we're going to call this one the Pope Francis Effect, because we've been hearing this a lot lately. And, you know, this is typical Jesuit behavior. And, you know, we haven't, on this radio program, we have not explained to you um, we're getting to it, okay? We're what getting a Jesuit is. What a Jesuit really is, and what and they do exactly what their what their what mo their, is. Exactly. And uh, we're going to though. Believe me, we are going to bring you, Lord willing. Uh, you pray for us as we serve the Lord, and we and we continue on and labor through this uh, because we enjoy it. Okay, it's a blessing to us. It's a labor of love. But we want to be able to bring you some things. We are going to get to the Jesuits. Okay, we are going to describe who they are. What the Vatican-led New World Order really is, and uh, we are going to definitely cite source after source. That's why we've been that. setting you up with That's these right. whole radio show That's series. Right. We've been leading it up to that. We are leading up to that point to where we really unfold uh, this end times beast system, uh, this antichrist system, and just who are the physical players on this earth. We understand the spiritual players, but the physical players. Anyway, so what we're talking about now, though, is the Pope. And I want to talk to you about the Francis effect, okay? And I'm going to have Brother Nate kick this off uh, with an article, a short little article, and then I'm going to add to it with this, which just shows you what, what this this Pope Francis's philosophy is and, and just what he's actually doing here with 1.1 billion people that he is leading along. What's his end game? What's he trying to do? What is, Brother Nate, the Francis effect? Well, we get an article here that says Catholic gay rights group gets VIP treatment at Vatican for first time, cites Francis effect. They're the ones that coined that term. That's right. Pope Francis has caused so much radical change in such a short period of time that his fawning admirers have given it a name. They call it the Francis effect. This effect is bringing sweeping winds of change to the Catholic Church. Uh, Francis is opening up the one world religion tent. And all the end times animals are coming in. Vatican City, a prominent American Catholic gay rights group, was given VIP treatment for the first time at an audience with Pope Francis on Wednesday. A move members saw as a sign of change in the Roman Catholic Church. This is a sign of movement that's due to the Francis effect, said Sister Janine Gramick, co-founder of New Ways Ministry which ministers to homosexual Catholics and promotes gay rights in the 1.2 billion member church. So this was a sodomite Catholic woman, co-founder of this ministry. And what is she saying? She's she's showing you her hope and, and how Pope Francis is helping her dreams to come true and the dreams and the vision of her ministry uh, that ministers to homosexual Catholics and promotes gay rights. It's promoting homosexuality within the Catholic Church. That's right. That's what the whole goal is. That's and, what their operation does. That's what their, their organization does. And so she's excited about this, Francis Effect. Gramic and Executive Director Francis DiBernardo led a pilgrimage of 50 homosexual Catholics to the audience in St. Peter Square. They told Reuters in an interview afterwards that when the group came to Rome, on Catholic pilgrimages during the papacies of Francis's predecessors, John, Paul, and Benedict, they just ignored us. So you see that? The past two popes, they said, just ignored them. But not so with Pope Francis. He's, mm. he's changing things. This time, a U.S. bishop and a top Vatican official backed their request, and they sat in a front section with dignitaries and special Catholic groups, as the Pope passed, they sang All Are Welcome, a hymn symbolizing their desire for a more inclusive church. And more inclusive means that a homosexual can be a Catholic and not repent of their sin. 
There you but go. Keep on living in it and be included in the church. Well, and, and you know what this fits into? I don't know if you're done with that yet. Or yep, it's all okay. done. Um, you know what this fits into, is, and this segues perfectly into what we're talking about here with this one. There's an article called Post Pope Francis at the Huffington Post. Pope Francis slams prejudiced mentality of believers who fearfully cling to religious laws. So what does he actually mean by that? Well, he means exactly what Brother Nate just explained to you. Uh, Pope Fran- The Francis effect is to knock down doctrinal walls that's what it's for that's, there it that's, is any doctrinal walls any you know what this pope is doing i'm gonna tell you what what let me tell you what mystery babylon is doing and I, I you know we don't have a lot of time to cover this but mystery babylon what are they doing they're they're shape-shifting in essence come on david I... they, yeah i know it sounds crazy doesn't it they are they are sh- we just did a, a pope watch last week on david oh Ike. you gotta listen to that, that one yeah that listen to that one yeah that's right we expose that devil for who he is but uh, both devils the pope and david ike they're they're of the same they're lizards of the same uh, uh of the same uh i don't know if you could say flock because lizards don't go yeah in yeah flock. that's true they don't i don't know maybe they're hatched from the of same, the same eggs. i don't know crypt. yeah <laughs> <laughs> they don't anyway. But um, the thing is, is that what's Francis doing? Well, he's doing what a Jesuit does. I guess we call it the Francis effect. We're going to call the Francis effect the Jesuit effect, okay? Because that's what Jesuits do, by the way. Uh, that's what Vatican II was about. That's what all these things are about. So what's he doing here? He's knocking down doctrinal divisions. Why? Uh, you know, it. it, it I, I remember hearing um, a clip from uh, TBN. Remember Paul Crouch? I, I don't. I don't care about all that doctrinal doo doo. Remember that? Remember yes, when he I said do that? Remember that I don't care about all that doctrinal doo-doo. He's talking about a bunch of Pharisees out there picking yeah. little doctrinal bits out of people's eyes. I, you, you, I don't care about all that. God's going to sort all that doctrinal doo-doo Heresy out, you hunters. Heresy hunters. Yeah, yeah that's, what he, that's what he calls us. And well, you know why he's saying that? Because they were calling him out for the phony yeah, for the liar phony that he was. million dollar. All they are is Mystery Babylon. They're an extension of that in the spirit. The charismatic movement is nothing more than an extension of Rome. Rome started it. Oh, the Jesuits yeah, started right. it. Absolutely. We'll get into that. We don't have time to get into it today, but that we'll back that statement up for sure. And, all uh, right. Knock, anyway. Knocking down doctrinal that's walls. That's right. Knocking down doctrinal walls. He says this, this Pope says in a very powerful sermon, this article says, that signaled his desire to push ahead with historic reforms. Pope Francis on Sunday uh, said the Roman Catholic Church must be open and welcoming whatever the cost. Now stop there. What does whatever that mean? Whatever the cost. Whatever the cost. What does that mean? That means that, he, that the Francis Jesuit effect is to knock down every doctrinal wall. They are going to – listen, Roman Catholicism is going to do its best over the next few years, and you're going to see this. You're seeing it now to completely shift itself into being something else where you will right. not be able to recognize they're it. They're changing their appearance. As any, yeah, they're changing their appearance like Satan does. That's what Mystery Babylon, right. the, in Proverbs chapter 7, I believe it says her ways are, are movable. movable. That's right. Thou canst not know them. That's what she's doing. She's the strange woman. That's right. She's the strange woman. That she's harlot morphing. church. That's right. She's yep. morphing into something else. She's yep. shifting into something else because her ways are, are pat. You, you can't know them. You, you ever try to know evil? It's hard, man. You can't understand evil like that. That's why the Bible says for us to be simple concerning evil right. uh, because we can't understand the diabolical evil because we have the Holy Ghost inside of us, and it's another spirit. We just can't get that spirit. We just know it's evil, and God says identify it, mark that spirit, uh, you know, and, and let everybody know what it is. Right. So Francis is doing this. He, he's, he's, he's trying to erase any doctrinal stands that, 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 the, that the Vatican takes so he can open up and be more inclusive, like the, like the article just said, to everybody. Uh, even today, it can, be, it can happen that we stand at the crossroads of these two ways of thinking, the Pope said as he outlined the current debate in the Church between those seen as doctrinal legalists and those like... Francis, who want a more pastoral approach. Now, Nate, it's interesting because what do we hear as as independent Baptists? Uh, I've heard that word, legalist, we quite get, a few. We get called times. legalists when what? What do we preach? Holiness, righteousness, separation, living for God, obeying the Bible, uh, obeying the Bible, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That we don't believe in a gospel that doesn't change someone. We don't believe that nonsense. When you believe that television and movies and, and right. rock music is wicked. Yeah, you're just a legalist, That's and, and legalism. Francis is sending his 
cue out to all of his little boys out there, and all of his little no pun intended, and all and all of his and, and all of their their uh, their other affiliates, and that hey, you know what? We're open. We're open to homosexuals and sodomite priests. We're open to all these things. We don't want to have any. We've already known that for a while. That's why we had all the pedophiles. That's right. Yeah. I mean, come on. It was a haven for pedophiles. They were comfortable there. Uh, they got away with millions of priests have gotten away with. Yeah. With See, here's here's abuse. the real deal. Rome has always had an open, and, but false policy and a secret but true policy. In the open, they have these supposed doctrines and stances that they take. We're like, oh, we're against sodomite marriage and we're against pedophilia and all this stuff. But secretly, they're for it. Because why else do we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of priests that have come out as pedophiles molesting children? By the hundreds, they paid out mi- millions, probably billions of dollars in lawsuits. Yes, they have, and they've covered you know, everything up, covering the stuff up. And, and and there's and who knows how many more priests are pedophiles that have not been reported to the police. So yeah, so he says he says Jesus responds immediate to the lepers' plea without waiting to study the situation and all its possible consequences. Francis declared, "For Jesus, what 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 matters above all is reaching out to save those far off." Now let's stop for a second because that is a lie. Yes, it is. That is straight up a lie. Almost every single person he went to that he healed, he asked them if they had faith first. That's right. You have faith in me, in Christ. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And if they were sinners, he told them. He, he told confronted them. them with their sin. Now, if they were already humbled and they admitted, right. these sodomites are not right. admitting that they're sinners. No. They're not admitting that they need to be saved, that they need to be forgiven of their sins. But right. Jesus, when he dealt with the with the with the uh, they, harlot, they, what did he say to her? She was already on her face. And you know what? Most of the time, when someone came to Jesus and they asked to be healed, they called him Lord first. That's they right. Were they recognized him as, his lordship. as Lord. He's Lord, King, Sovereign, Absolutely. Master. Absolutely, they recognized his lordship. Right. They recognized who he was and then what did they what did jesus tell him did he say oh and go and sin some more go and be a sodomite some more no he didn't tell the prostitute that what he tell her go and he said, sin, go no, and sin more. no more he didn't say you're accepted into fellowship now live like the devil now be a rotten harlot keep being a whore hey stay a whore he didn't say that to her no he told her to, he told her go and sin no more you know, and, and uh, so anyway, but but that's not what the Pope is saying here. The Pope is saying let's let's bring everybody together. Let's br- the Pope is getting the band back together. That's what he's doing. In other words, he's just getting the old band back together of every harlot, every wicked abomination. I mean that spiritually, by the way. Um, he's bringing them all back together. Back he's under he's the, yeah back under, under the, the mother authority. church. That's yeah. right. That's what he's doing. Uh, Francis says for Jesus, what matters above all is reaching to save those far off, healing the wounds of the sick, restoring everyone to God's family. And this is scandalous to some people. Jesus is not afraid of this scandal, the pontiff continued. He does not think of the closed-minded who are scandalized even by a work of healing, scandalized before any kind of openness, by any action outside of their mental and spiritual boxes. Hmm. Uh, By any care or sign of tenderness which does not fit into their unusual thinking and their ritual purity. Their ritual purity. Do you see what he's saying? He is just trying a bunch to say, of manipulation. Right. It's yeah. Jesuit. Man, it's the Francis effect. Is the Jesuit effect? That's really what we're going to call this. Probably is the Francis Jesuit effect because that's what it is. It's all Jesuit speaking. That's all it is. Yeah. It's double talk. It's wickedness. I, I go on to say this here. He, he says this. Um, he, Jesus was afraid of the scandal, but he says this since his election almost two years ago. Francis has pushed the church to focus less on denouncing the sins of others. So don't denounce the sins of others, he's saying. That's his goal as Pope. Don't you call out sin. Right. Why? Because I have found, listen, Pastor Cooley, you're talking here. I have found that if you go to a large fundamental Baptist church, uh, just pick one, most of them. And I'm a Baptist, by the way. I'm an independent Baptist, um, separated, uh, historic. But um, if you go if you go to most churches today, if they only speak in generalities, Everybody shows up and puts money in their offering plate. The kids go to the games. They play their Patch the Pirate. They have their fun. They do their kitty clubs, and they have their youth department, uh, which is atrocious for most of from on, 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 under most circumstances, it's absolutely atrocious. But uh, they have all these things, and guess what? Nobody's mad. Nobody gets mad because you're preaching all generalities, right? Okay, but when you start denouncing sin specifically, the flock gets a little thin. In big churches, 
the flock would get. Hey, I think you just came up with a rhyme. Did when I you start denouncing sin? The flock gets a little thin. Hey, that's a rhyme. I was a poet and didn't even know it. How about that, huh? That was great. We'll have to quote you on that one. You'll have to quote me on that one. That's going to be a Facebook quote now. All right. Anyway, but but he says, but, I'll, but listen to what he says here. He says, on denouncing, not, don't denounce the sin of others, especially on issues of sexual morality. Yeah, why does he focus on that so much? What's up with this pope? Why does he like sodomites so much? And I transgenders wonder. and yeah, transvestites and yeah. and uh, gender queers. Gender, yeah. What's up with this guy? Um, kind of weird. I mean, his name is Francis. I know, but it's just it's just a little strange that he he really feels very close to sodomites. Um, kind of like Rob Bell. Yeah, kind of like Rob. You no, know, Rob Bell just came out recently and said the church is very it's close close to accepting. To accepting. Well, Gays. and here at Old Pass Baptist Church, this is this Sound of Battle Christ and Ministry of Old Pass Baptist Church. We are an independent local New Testament church, which means that we could care less in the sense of what it has to do with what we believe here, what any other church does. OK, and I don't mean that it doesn't mean we don't love them. We don't pray for people because we do. My point is I'm not changing because I don't believe in the church is getting ready to accept this. We believe in local New Testament churches like you find all over the word of God. You find local New Testament churches. You know how to keep apostasy down. You keep the local New Testament church pure That's right. by following the word of God. And you kick out the goats and, and the you wolves. kick out the wolves and you hold the standard high, you hold up the word of God, and you hold men accountable. The pastor to the people, they are held accountable. And when that happens, the wolves are gone. And you know what else happens with that? You you call out sin, you denounce sin. Now, sexual morality, God hates it. If you look in the scriptures, you will find from Genesis to Revelation, God absolutely 100% hates sexual immorality. Whether it's in a saint got, or a sinner, got, he hates it. In the uh, New Testament, that umbrella of fornication covers comes a up. Lot. It covers everything, every type of sexual immorality. And we find over and over again in tons of the epistles in the New Testament, yep. every time it starts listing off sins that you should repent of or that are going to send you to hell or that you need to mortify through the spirit, put to death, fornications almost every time is the first one that it names. In the That's list right. Of sins. Because God hates fornication. He hates yeah. it. He absolutely and he likens it to spiritual fornication. He likens the same thing and he hates and he both puts of it in, them. And he puts it in a special category, saying all other sins are done without the body, but this but is this is done, done against your own against body. Against your own body. Yeah. And he talks about linking it with a harlot, and we know Rome is a harlot church yeah. anyway. It has been. Uh, for a long time. Right. Okay. Um, so anyway, but the Pope says, hey, don't worry about these sexual immor immoral sins uh, to instead to reach out more to the poor and the social outcasts. He also wants the church, especially the leadership, to reform itself. And he has convened a series of high-level summits at the Vatican to discuss. Over and Nate just talked about a high-level summit with a bunch of sodomites. That's right. That's his high-level summit. That's the way he wants to reform the church. Do you see you but see. Keeps Church. doing though, and he's playing perfectly into the liberal mentality of all, all the liberals talk about. You see, you see, I've heard people say that to us when we're out preaching sometimes. Go, why don't you guys just go help the poor and do blah blah? blah. Why are you wasting your time doing this? And so we see a shifting of emphasis to helping people temporarily on this earth, give them money, give them food, but then sending them to hell because you're not given them the gospel you're not and because in order to give someone the gospel the good news you have to give them the bad news first which means calling out sin because you can't know that you're a sinner unless you name sin because the bible says for sin is transgression of the law and that's why we preach the law a schoolmaster to bring men to christ that's what the bible says that's right. right? Absolutely. And but so he's saying don't preach he's the law. He's saying don't preach the law. You don't legalist. preach the gospel. Because, and so that's sending people to hell. Nate, I seem to remember, like you said, us going out preaching all the time, and that's what we hear. You bunch of legalists. You guys are just a bunch of legalists. You don't want yeah. anybody to have any fun. Right. No, we want people to live for God and not go to hell. That's what we that's right. want. We don't want to see people and, go to hell. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with helping somebody. And, and no. I don't mind giving a homeless person money. or Me neither. Or, or I'd rather give them food. food or something. Or, you know, it'd be nice if they could help them out in some way. But, you know, in reality, 
They're going to spend that money. They're going to eat that food. And guess what? The next day they're going to be hungry again. Maybe they even get a job. Maybe they get a job again and, and they're poor and you give them a nice house. And they got a great life. And guess what? They're still going to die and go to hell. That's they're right. Not saved. That's right. You know, Brother Aaron made a good comment. He said, are you saying that the price of an open mind is a closed Bible? That's right. And that's, that's very true. Uh, you know, an open mind is a closed Bible because, you know, we need your right. bi- don't open your mind. Open your Bible, okay, because God right. will open up your understanding to things like that when it comes to that. And you should have an open mind until you find the truth, and then you need to shut it. Amen. That's right. Absolutely. And you don't need to let any lies in. That's right. That's right. Um, now, he also, okay, so we're almost done with this here, but uh, Pope Francis, I here here's an interesting. Francis seemed to provide such a jolt. See, the Vatican's old guard has a problem with this. Okay, there's some old level yeah. Vaticans in there that they don't really, they don't want to see the church turn into a sodomite festival openly anyway. They don't mind it behind doors. They don't mind, right. they don't mind, um, uh, seducing nuns and then, and then burying their babies, uh, under the, under under the uh, monasteries and other oh, places. Oh, that would like never that. happen. No, that wouldn't happen. You because, mean piles? Because normal you men... mean piles and piles of baby skeletons in the yeah. catacombs? Oh, we never yeah, found because that. Obviously, you understand that women and men, most women and men, they don't have an innate desire that's inside of them from God to want to procreate and to want to and to want to yeah. to want to be married. It's, so no, uh, it's natural words, to make a man just be celibate for his whole yeah, life. So men are going to be celibate for the rest of his life, and he's not going to touch those nuns. I mean, he's going to walk into a convent, and those nuns are taught to serve the father of that of that place and do whatever and then behind the closed doors what do you think a man's going to do when he doesn't marry i mean it's pretty obvious isn't it you say oh pastor cooley what are you a pervert no i'm not a pervert i'm just a man okay um i i just i know how men work that's why i'm married because god said i was supposed to be married so i didn't burn okay that's what the bible said isn't it's it it's funny though how plain the bible is it says the bishop's supposed to be the husband of one, one wife. wife and then I mean, how hard is it for them to to get around that commandment to yeah, to, just, to require celibacy for a priest? It's only just a, only a Jesuit can do it. It's really funny. Francis seemed to provide such a jolt on Sunday remarks that were truly foundational. See, the the new guard is saying, "Hey, man, Francis, you got to push it now." The old guard is saying, "No, you better slow down. You're going too fast." And then now, but in the words of Reverend Antonio Spadaro, an Italian Jesuit who is close to the Pope. Uh, he says, hey, he's he's given that. he tr- It's truly foundational, the words that he's saying. And he's really, you know, since when do Jesuits believe that you ought to turn the church into that? Their church, by the way, it's not our church. But anyway, throughout his 15-minute homily, Francis repeatedly slammed the narrow and prejudiced mentality of being... Th- of believers who cling to religious laws out of fear. They wind up rejecting the very people they should be ministering to, he said, which means anyone on the margins of society who encounters discrimination. So what he's really talking about there is he's talking about sodomites and transvestites and transgenders who most people don't want to accept. Okay? They don't want they, they don't they're not re- they're not going to say we're not going to accept this into society like this is normal. Like we don't no. want our children accepting this garbage from the pit of hell. It's wickedness. It's it, it's it's wicked. Against nature. It's right. It's a sin against nature the Bible says. And Francis though he wants the Francis Jesuit effect is to what? It's to get you to accept it. Knock down those doctrinal walls, accept the sin, approve the sin, and let it all in. And uh, and like you said, we're, it's changing, it's transforming. Francis has really been just changing the the face of the Catholic Church and in changing, improving their social relations because the cat. What everything that Pope Francis has been taking a stand on is basically what every everything in Hollywood wants you to do. If, he's saying, I want you, cool, you know? he's saying, yeah, grab all the outcasts and anybody you can. He says this, our mission is for the world in today's world is, is for those that are pushed aside for whatever reason. But he also listed specific examples saying the Cardinals should see the crucified Lord and the hungry and the unemployed, those who are in prison. And even in those who have lost their faith or declared themselves to be atheist or turned away from the practice of the faith. See, he's saying that. That, you know, if they're atheists, hey, bring them into the church. Let them come in. Let them have communion. Let them be a part of the of the of the church. They can be atheist. They don't have to repent of that. They don't have to repent. They, they could just continue on. And he's right. They could be a part of that church because the Roman Catholic whore accepts anybody because the mother of all harlots. They, they, Did they you don't see care. how he, he the false paradigm he gives, though, because he says people like us don't care about these people, first of all. And second of all, that. 
he's supposedly reaching out to them that we're not reaching out to them when we're calling them to repentance. Right. You know? Right. He's saying, no, you need to have a social gospel. He, that's really what he's Just pushing. Just bring them in and tell them you don't need to change. And when you preach to them, no, your sin's wrong. You need to repent. And if you believe on Jesus Christ, he'll forgive you. And then you can come into the church. Right. But you can't come into the church and pretend that you're going to heaven. We're going to comfort you on your way to hell. Yeah, they're going to comfort it. Sin? He's going to comfort them in their sin. That's what he's doing. He wants to keep them sinners. Why? We, you don't because love, he doesn't love them. No, he doesn't love them. That's not real love. No. Real love warns. That's right. Real love calls men to repentance. Jesus Christ came here and he called men to repentance. What did he do? And they went out ever, everywhere preaching that men should, should repent. repent. That's right. That's what John the Baptist came out of the wilderness. What's the first words that came out of his mouth? Repent. Repent. Repent ye therefore, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent of what? Your sins. Jesus preached that thing too. The That's first right. uh, is when his ministry started. That's right. That was yep. his first. That was his, that was the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. That's what Mark Repent chapter ye. one says. Repent ye therefore. But that's Read not the what the, that's not what the horror church, Roman Catholicism, the Babylonian the Babylonian mystery religion. Uh, the mother of all harlots once. The Francis effect is what? He is knocking down all the barrier. Why? Because he's not satisfied with 1.1 billion people. Francis wants the Muslims, the Sodomites, the Buddhists, everyone. See, the devil hates you, and the most hateful thing that the devil could do to you is lie to you and tell you you can live however you want and be a part of the church. You can be a Christian and not repent, and you're going to go to heaven. That's the most hateful thing you can do because the whole while you think that you're good, you're going to heaven, you're right with God, and you're going to bust hell wide open That's when right. you die. That's right. He doesn't care because Mystery Babylon doesn't care because they, they're going to take as many to hell with them as they can. That's right. That's why so, it's the mother of all harlots that's and abominations. Right. It is. All right. So for Brother Nate Marino, this is Pastor Jason Cooley with Sound the Battle Cry Ministries and Pope Watch for this week. Browns and soldiers rally round the banner. Steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout a loud hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Strong to meet the foe, marching as we go. While our cause we know must prevail. Shield and banner bright, gleaming.